Mukaona zimai ya kulila mumamba bwa Akamuchota chibele kero mumamba bwa Sonsezi zapeweka kati tisi mtachina chaka yet another edition of Freedom and Choices, a program that is produced by Center for Solutions Journalism. I'm Briska Gonsida, and my guests today are Jibondi Mrumbwa and Sharon Rose Welcome into the program, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jibondi, tell us more about yourself. Who is Jibondi Mrumbwa? I am Jibondi Mrumbwa. I am a human rights activist, a communications expert, and a radical feminist. I am someone who is 28, and I believe and have the passion for everybody's rights especially those for minority groups and yeah that is who i am sharon rose tell us more about yourself who is sharon well simple girl <laughs> um a feminist trying to find myself where i fit in with the whole feminism agenda um uh involved with she decides malawi uh, movement builder and really just yeah a simple girl. Okay, so you're all young people here. So I would like to know what are the challenges that young people are facing nowadays, especially in the country? Well, from what I have seen and what I have like noted, a lot of like the employment rate for those of youth are very high. Um, healthcare is lacking. There's not enough resources, not enough information, not enough knowledge. Peer-to-peer um, -peer dialogue and intergenerational dialogue. And just also giving them resources and in order to create who they want to be in the future in terms of capital, you know, creating a business and also education. Very like there's a lot of youth that are failing to access the right education. And yeah, that's a lot basically in one thing that I can briefly say. Okay, Sharon, what do you think are some of the challenges that young people are facing? Um, I think Chigondi mentioned most of them, but um, a lot of the youth right now, I would say they're complaining with um, employment or just finding a source of income. Like, even if you try business, it's you see that it's not going anywhere, you're not evolving, you're just stuck in the same place. So, yeah, really. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are living in a digital world now. Technology is getting more and more advanced each and every day. Do you think that technology is supporting the advancement of uh, human rights? Um, I don't think so. Mm. Um, because the more it advances, the more expensive it gets. Mm. And then it also has, it becomes a class issue. I can afford a phone, but someone in the rural area can't. So trying to find a way to fill those gaps for those in the rural areas, especially the young women, how do we also help them? Like, is it, are we gonna use radio stations? Are we going to use, are we gonna give away like, you know, laptops or what? Like, how are you reaching them through the digital world? Because I feel like, the, like as I said, the more it advances, the more expensive it gets. And it's not really an intersectional and inclusive um, field as it advances. Yeah. Okay, so for those people who can actually uh, afford it, yes. how do you think it's helping them when it comes to human rights? Knowledge and networking and community. People are able to come together, talk about things, learn from each other, and also through that, they figure out who they are, what they are lacking, where they can help in the community, and... Yeah, I guess that's how the information is spread so that they can go out there and help others if they do. But yeah, that's my take. Okay, so Sharon, Chibunda has mentioned about access to information. So for those people who cannot access uh, the technology stuff, how can they access information? Well, when she said knowledge, my mind jumped when she was mentioning radio, what, mm -hmm. what, because at least right now, I think every district in Malawi has the community radio, right? And that is a really good move, but then we are, there's still a, a very big gap because um, something is going to happen. Let's say breaking news. I get to see what has really happened. Maybe it's a video or a picture or something describing something, but then they're just going to hear. And I'm not saying that they won't understand, 
but sometimes you need to see something to like really understand what it what it is really saying you know so i think there's a really big gap on that Mukaona zimai ya kulila mumamba bwa Aka muchota chibele kero mumamba bwa So sezi sape weka kati tisi mtachina chaka Lamula la uchembele liuniki Welcome back to Freedom in Choices a program produced by Center for Solutions Journalism you are with me, Priska Gusida, and in today's program, my guests are Chikundi Murumbwa and Sharon Rose Shirinda. So, girls, welcome back. Uh, we talked a lot about the challenges that young people are facing in the country, uh, and one of the issues that you came up with was the issue of access to information on sexual reproductive health and rights. So, what do you think are the challenges now that young people face when they want to access SRHR information? Well, there's not enough information for them. There's not enough resources for them. There's not enough knowledge, like literally giving them the knowledge, even if it means like printing out flyers or having little trainings or even going out in the rural areas to talk to them and stuff. Nobody is doing that. And so that is really affecting people and their they're afraid and ashamed when it comes to um, SRHR because sex, sexual health, reproductive rights, the first word is sex. So now it just sounds like it's something that is taboo, something that is demeaning, something that is not even spoken about in the community. So I feel like that is the problem, the gatekeeping and not even wanting to try to give them that and when you give when you do give them that like when you do talk to them which is the elderly you scare them so how do you expect these people to actually keep themselves safe and taken care of and you know protect themselves and understand their bodies you know it's their well-being when they have every right to know the options they have to take care of themselves and be given the resources and access to that Okay, one would argue to say that Malawians have a problem when it comes to reading. Like, most people don't like to read. So even if, you mentioned about flyers, that's why I'm asking you this. So even if we produce the flyers and they're all over the place, are you sure that young people will be able to actually get them and read and understand the messages? There's always a way to communicate with everyone. Always a way to communicate with everyone. If you go out to schools, even the rural areas, you have to you have to talk to them and approach them in a way of that this is benefiting you so even if you give them the flyers yes what is wrong with someone standing there talking about it and someone who is lively you know can you know hype a crowd whatever and then at the end you give them the flyers what is wrong with doing something like learn to adapt to the people that you're talking to and the people that you your target audience and the people you're you know approaching I think I wouldn't be able to go out to a rural area and tell young girls or whatever, like ABCD, ABCD. I can't because I'm coming from a point of privilege and another class. Whereas if it's somebody who within their community has influence, even if they're just slightly older or even in the same age range and talks to them, if she is an influencer, a leader, what's wrong with her doing it and you being there to capture and research and just support and let them know that even we can come to you or even bringing them to us what is wrong with actually making people feel like they are people they are humans they are dignified mm -hmm. like they deserve this and they deserve to know about it okay sharon what are what do you think are some of the challenges that young people are facing when they try to access srhi information well i think we're not using um we're not being at um we're not using creative ways to like tell them this is this, but also we're not telling them the whole story. Mm -hmm. Just tell them maybe abortion is bad, full stop. You don't explain why it's bad or why it's not bad. So that is really a problem. So what do you think needs to be done to solve the issues that we have raised? I think approaching young people with the same information, but 
in a creative manner, mm -hmm. not just creative because not everyone is creative like that, but as she said, using different methods to relay the message to them so that they understand, but also not just telling them half of the story. Let's have the whole thing out there. Don't just say abortion is bad. Why is it bad? So that's what I think. Okay, so I also mentioned about abortion. Mm -hmm. So abortion is one of the burning issues on sexual reproductive health in Malawi. So uh, what do you think about the termination of pregnancy bill? Do you think that the Malawi government should enact the uh, proposed termination of pregnancy bill? Definitely. Why? Because, well, like I said, people don't know the whole thing. If you looked at the whole um, bill, you see it explains things properly. But they just think well, you can go and access um, the, the, what people think is that if you're pregnant and you just don't want the pregnancy, then you can go and get it, you know? You, you can go and get an abortion just like that. That is what people think, but that is not the case. There are um, procedures in there in the bill that people do not know about. They just hear the heading abortion. And everyone is like, oh no, that is bad. <coughs> okay, so what does the definition of pregnancy bill say? Um, it says, um, if I have been raped, well, I should do this myself, but if someone has been raped, or oh, you, you wouldn't want to keep that pregnancy because trauma is a real thing. And I know Malawi does not um, really talk about mental health issues like that. But trauma is a real thing and it affects someone's life in a really negative way. If someone gets raped and they get pregnant, that is when you, uh, they are allowed to like, um, can I, uh, they can get an abortion. That is what the bill says. Because um, that pregnancy, someone would be affected from it because you, you'll be traumatized. And I know Malawi does not really acknowledge mental health like that. It's not on a large scale. Yes, there are people doing things, but it's not on a large scale. But trauma like that is, is really something that can st stop someone from progressing in their life. So that is one of the things that um, it talks about. Okay, so as Mara, we've been discussing the termination of pregnancy bill for years. What do you think are the challenges that, are, that the bill is facing? At the moment? It's a class issue. It's a class issue. Mm -hmm. Anyone in middle and upper class can go out and actually get that. Mm -hmm. They can do it secretly. They can do it discreetly. Like they can afford it. Whereas those that are in the rural areas, they can't. That's why you hear that, oh, they've drank dishwashing liquids, you know, put sticks up, you know, their private area to get rid of, you know, the unwanted pregnancy. It's a class issue, to be very honest with you. I see it no other way. It is a class issue. And it is also an issue that has got to do with choice and allowing, not even allowing women, but giving women that access and that, um, that control over themselves and their lives. So for me, I think it is a class issue because those in the middle and upper class are shamed, yes, but it dies down. Whereas those in the rural areas, lower class, they die. And then also I do feel as if abortion is made to sound scary. Abortion, when you think of abortion, you, hear, you, you just hear death. So also learning to communicate it in the right way and learning to tell everyone like, this thing will save your life even especially parents, you know. There's parents who also go and help their kids do it, especially in the harmful way. Mm -hmm. So also doing that and then also like community outreach programs and even giving them the access like nearby because the hospitals are far to those who are in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Building those kinds of communities and um, buildings and you know, those sort of situations that can help them understand and just be right there. Whereas somebody from no, I should go the way to Blanda and they can't even like money, you know, transport. So being considerate of them and their conveniency and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Sharon, you want to mention about the bill saving lives. How do you think the bill also benefits young women and girls? Before I answer that, <laughs> I just want to say from the point you say that it's a class issue, mm -hmm. it's also selfish. Mm -hmm. Because the people who are make, who are approving this uh, this law they don't in the rural areas. They might have a house there, but they do not stay there. They can't relate to what a girl who is 12 years old goes through. So it's selfish because if their daughter or someone who they know 
goes through something like that, they're going to pay for it. It's like she said, in secret. They're going to go do that and no one is going to know about it. But that 12 year old girl in the rural area is going to suffer. She might even lose her life. So I think it's really selfish. Yes. Okay, so in as much as you're for the view, you would want the view to be passed and we know that it is only the members of parliament who are responsible for actually voting for the bill. What, what is your message to members of parliament concerning the bill? Members of parliament and religious leaders, those are the people I want to address. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you want your community to trust you, if you want young women to thrive, young girls to thrive, and if you want growth and progression within your communities, and even young boys, young men, giving them that knowledge, that, that access, and letting them know that you can have sex, but please do it in a safe way. There is protection. Giving them all that information, it will benefit you because there's so many other people. I don't know how people are able to sleep knowing that out there someone has died today because they tried to do it. You know what I mean? And religious leaders, I believe that God is love. And I don't think... Controlling someone is the way to go. And I, and I feel compassion and empathy, which are fruits of the spirit, are key. So when you look at these things and when you're deciding these things or when you're trying to control these things, what I believe is that, as I said, God is love. And I don't think God would want me to suffer at the hand of man's hand. At the, yeah, under man's hand. I don't think so. Thank you for watching Freedom in Choices. Today you're with me, Priska Gonsida, and my guests in the program were Chikondi Murongwa and Sharon Rose Chilinda. Until next time, bye.